the things that make me uncomfortable, the things that, that are out of my comfort zone, those are the ones I want to do. Innovation is all around us. Does anyone sometimes say, hey, I thought about that first? Maybe you used to spin before spinners or thought of a new ice cream flavor and suddenly see it in the grocery store. Yeah, I felt that. My guest today, Greg, from Greg Abandoned on Instagram, and I will find the common thread between explorers of abandoned places and the lessons of innovation as we float on this rock in space together. This is Thought Zero. We make thinking fun. I'm your host, Mr. Zero. Right across the world, there are places that we've forgotten, but my guest today finds them amid great risk. Greg, welcome to the show, and good morning from me to your good evening there. Tell me about where you are tonight. Um, hi, Mr. Zero. Hi. Thank you for having me. Uh, yes, I am currently in China. I live in uh, a little village of 10 million people called Qingdao, which is a city between Beijing and Shanghai. No one knows this place. Um, so I, I always kind of make a joke saying like, oh, it's just a little village of like 10 million people. You're there for work as well, or is that like your home country? Tell me more about that. Um, no, definitely not home country. Uh, I, uh, I work there. Yes. I, I am an international math teacher. I'm originally from Poland. I, I, I emigrated to England when I was young and I, uh, so I have like a double nationality, two passports. But basically Brexit proof and uh, yeah and about three years ago yeah three and a half years ago I decided to uh, leave uh, toxic England and move to China <laughs> from all places. And it, and it sounds like it's giving you some opportunities too because you're not finding a shortage of places that are abandoned and in fact now you, you've got a podcast yourself Chasing Bandos um, on iTunes a book coming titled Abandoned China so what's been exciting you lately? In China, I can like open my eyes a little bit uh, and it gave me a lot of different opportunities here. But those are the opportunities I kind of like uh, created for myself really. Um, and I wanted to, I, want, I just didn't want to waste this time. The wealth of places for me to explore here is just insane, absolutely insane. And you you get every single type of like place, abandoned place um, there is. And you can find all of those in China. How many do you think you've explored? Dozens, hundreds? Is it just like you keep finding more and more? I was actually just um, uh, working on a book and and yeah, in, in, in kind of like a note for, of, from the author, I, I said that I explored over 100 cities now. Wow. I, I have been to in so many places. Every summer, I have about seven weeks off, and so I will be on the road nonstop. Um, even uh, whenever I have little holidays, like Easter holidays, Christmas holidays, whatever, um, all the weekends, I would be, I would be always flying out looking for locations. Let's dig into that a bit more because you're a math teacher, yet you have mm -hmm. this thing that you say you're constantly on the road, uh, and you keep coming back to. So tell me more about that because there is a term that you refer to as people who are explorers of abandoned places. So I'd like you to kind of tell me more about that and why it's so important to you. Well, first of all, I just want to say that I am probably your least uh, typical math teacher that you can find. This is kind of like a, a, a job that allows me to, to do what I really am passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, which doesn't mean that I don't like it. I, I, I do love teaching, but my kind of passion is elsewhere. Um, in this community, like exploring abandoned places might seem a little bit weird until you actually see the pictures. Right. And you, and you realize, oh my God, wow, some of those places are incredible. And uh, yeah, it is called Urbex. Um, and the places are uh, called like bandos. That's why my podcast is called Chasing Bandos because you, we constantly going and trying to find those new places. And yeah, it, this has been um, a bit of a um, life-changing event. I basically got into it when I, 
like I basically, I got into it. I actually tried to go exploring after I got divorced. Um, and I then I found, I found my mate and, and I convinced him to go to Chernobyl with me. And basically after Chernobyl, I, I was never the same. Um, nothing to do with radiation, uh, <laughs> but I, I was just, I was just absolutely mesmerized by this place. Yeah. And, um, and, and kind of like Instagram gave me a little bit of a motivation. People uh, tend to um, criticize social media, but in my case, I would say it was a very, very positive response I got. Um, and kind of just kind of reinforce the idea that, oh, wow, there's actually, you know, um, some people actually like the, the, the pictures that you take. And it gives you like the, the, this kind of motivation to keep going. It was funny because at the time, this was my kind of last year of teaching in, in, in London. And I had this bunch of students who were like a little bit disfranchised. And then at the beginning of the year, I had a deal with some of the students. I, I told them, like, if you put your mind to it, you can do whatever you want. And I said to them, basically, um, I will get 1,000 followers on Instagram, starting from like zero. So there were many things were how, were, that, that were happening in that last year when I was in, in England. And, um, it was and yeah. Like and your life was shaking around and it was telling you you had to do something differently. Oh, man. I was, I was, I was falling asleep in my life. I was just becoming my dad. On your first podcast episode, you kind of talked maybe about a, a pivotal moment where it sounds like you took these hints in your life that you're ready for a change and you found an adventurous kind of path. Can you tell me about mm. that a bit for you? I, I always loved this kind of post-apocalyptic themes. I would, <laughs> I would like play this game called of Fallout 3 and I was just totally mesmerized by, by this game. There's this one moment when you are like escape the vault and you, and the door opens and, and you see this wasteland in front of you. Mm. And it's just like this, like this vast wasteland, and you can see those uh, um, a mon uh, capital building in the in the distance, and the Washington Monument, all this destroyed, yeah. and you can and you can go anywhere. So like almost and, like a theme park just for yourself. Yeah. So you know what? When I started exploring, when I went to Chernobyl for the first time, um, I just felt like I'm in this game. It was so weird. I just felt mm -hmm. like I am in this wasteland exploring. Um, which is like, I know it sounds super, super nerdy, but, it's not, but there's, it, a, there's a huge community of people that do this. I mean, I, for, for people listening now, like you're not just doing this because it's, it's just you doing it on your own, but mm, this is the whole community yeah. of people that call themselves explorers and there's rules that you kind of apply as a community as well to it now. In Europe, in America, it's, it's pretty huge. I, I'm, I'm quite surprised how, how, how big it got in recent years. Can you tell me more so about the kind of the the underlying culture within those that share that experience with you of finding places that it becomes like your own wonderland and you also pair it with a, a sense of preservation, um, right? I think if I could quote like you, you're covering the unknown and preserving the history. Well, what does that mean to you? I'm trying to always like reinforce and lead the way when it comes to the, um, the kind of the code. And I always yeah. keep saying like, even the pirates are the code. So like we should also follow some sort of guidelines. Um, and there is this like a cheesy little, little um, saying, you know, uh, take nothing but uh, pictures, uh, leave nothing but footprints. Mm -hmm. And I feel I feel that we are doing something that's not technically legal because most of us, you know, we are trespassing on, 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 on the property. Um, we're not doing any harm really. We, we're just going and kind of taking pictures and most of the places get demolished. So um, that's where this kind of like preserving history kind of uh, uh, comes right. from because um, the amount of places that I've been to and, and, and took photographs of, they no longer, they, they don't longer exist. So uh, in a way, I'm kind of preserving them by, by, uh, by taking pictures of them. And in this community, um, 
there is uh, like with everything you have people who are absolutely amazing you have some bad apples right if you go to a place in england or america in europe and you share the location the place gets swarmed the place get uh, oh. like overwhelmed the, the, it blows up and p- so many people go there and then more people go more people know about it and therefore it attracts you know different type of people vandals and the, the, those places very quickly get demolished uh, set on fire and just destroyed mm-hmm. that's why i always say you know keep keep your locations to yourself amid attraction of those that might commercialize it there's likely a huge process for you and those who have that sense of preservation to prepare to find these places before others do. And I wanted to share something with you quickly and read it and just kind of get your reaction from it. As you are likely preparing for uh, a space that you want to explore, it, it kind of takes a lot of lead up time, right? And and part of that it is involved in innovation and especially transformative, transform, transformative innovation. So I'll read this statement here. Innovation is a totally different game. This is especially the case when we're working on transformative innovations where we are creating new products and services for new markets. In this case, you have to take the mindset of someone who's leading a team of explorers who are about to step into the great unknown. This is a useful metaphor to use. If you have a team that is about to travel to an unknown place and is not really wise for you to ask them uh, for a detailed plan, roadmap, or expected returns, this makes no sense. As a leader in that situation, you have to realize that you are asking people to go out into the world and find out if there is something worth investing in there. And I wanted to read that to you because you have to balance these risks of arrest, of uh, you know dangerous places. You have no idea if you know what you're stepping on is. Uh, each step is likely a danger. Buildings that you have no idea of the safety codes, and it's similar to the business world where, you know, in a pre, or in a, sorry, in a post-COVID world. You know, we're leading into whole new areas of, of um, business and how we conduct ourselves. And it will likely take an explorer uh, mindset to enter that. And I wanted to get your, your sense of like, do you feel that connection um, as you prepare and share your experiences with other, others that explore these places that there's a lot of preparation, risk, but it kind of tweaks you and and trains you in a different mindset. I think like where some some people see things as kind of scary or forbidden, uh, for me it's kind of like a little bit different. I, I see I see the excitement. Um, I see um, the fact that it is difficult. That's why I want to do it. If it's too easy, it doesn't really... Um, doesn't really create any sort of um, reaction for me. I mean, like, I'm, I'm obviously happy if the place is uh, easy to get to and it's nice and I can take pictures of. But the ones I really remember is the ones where you had to like make some sort of effort. You've talked about how some of your places are easy to find, but you've had to cross a river, I think, recently to, to enter a, a location. You want to tell me about that? I was exploring... Uh, abandoned power plant in the mountains and this power plant when uh, i was there with my friend and we when we walked into it it was it was a, little, a wreck I, and the building was just a wreck it was like gutted f- f- for parts like inside it was just a lich- i could never even imagine there would be the turbine because you when you when you think about exploring power plant power plant you really want to take pictures of the turbines and you really want to go to the control room like that's one of those things where you you always want and um so we eventually managed to find our way um to the top and um i discovered this um i discovered this um the, the main halls where the uh where the turbine was and i'm walking towards that and in the corner of my eye i noticed uh, the control room in the distance and I turn my head towards that and in that moment 
that was the moment where I kind of decided this whole trip because if I carry on walking, I would have just been caught. Because what happened is I actually turned towards the control room and after one second, I saw on the wall the button that there, there were light on them. And then the second later, my eyes it goes from like from the wall at the top a little bit down and I see a guy there was a security guy or someone sitting there. And that's where I freak out. It was like, oh my God, there's someone there. All right, let's turn around. And when we got up the hill, the security guy spotted us because we were going through the bushes and we were making a bit of a noise there. And, um, and so, yeah, um, he started shouting after us. We quickly ran. What I discovered on the top of the hill, there were train tracks and there was a tunnel. Just they dig the tunnel through the mountain. So we went through there. So you're and exiting completely a different way that you entered. Completely different, completely different. Uh, we absolutely had no idea. And we climbed down from that mountain in completely different place. And this time we were, um, we were outside now. And there was a bit of a, like a barbed wire fence, but it was, it was like, it, it was nothing. And there was a river. And on the other side of the river, there is a road that we need to get to. And I, when I was outside there, I was pretty relaxed at that time. And then all of a sudden, the security guard just turns up from completely different uh, side, but by the river, and he started shouting at us. And I don't actually know if he was showing, like, come over here or go away, if he was moving like that. <laughs> but but I either wasn't... way, you want to be as far away from him as possible. Yes. And at that moment, we, yeah, it, it was like, it was like, what do we do? The only option for us to get to the, to the road and call our driver is to cross that river. And I must say, I must say this was one cold water because I did not expect to, um, to be doing this. Uh, you know, um, I had to take my trousers off, my socks off, my shoes off, and just I went into that water. It was super, super cold. Do you think I can do it? I don't know. Oh, cool. Is it sharp? Oh, f oh. So yeah, it was one of those kind of situations. That weekend was uh, absolutely insane. Um, we um, next day we actually had a really close. Uh, encounter with the security as well um, and this was this was very rare for me next next day because i got into like physical altercation with a security guard we were exploring this um uh, steel factory but i honestly the only way i can uh, explain this is it was like we were exploring like some small town because mm -hmm. this place was like it was, it was huge. I think if I was there for a whole day, I still wouldn't be able to see everything. Well, and let me just be clear. So this is the day no. after you yeah. almost got arrested for trespassing. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Oh. And then still ending up where you didn't arrive and somehow still made it back, slept on that experience woke up wanting more am i am i understanding that correctly <laughs> i mean yeah we were we were exploring over the weekend so we weekend is two days so you know we were not so you we were not willing to give up on just one day you know it was uh, everything ended up being successful so you know we're going the next day this almost screams to me from my viewpoint in the forbes newsroom and watching like ceos and c-suites this concept of an explorer's mindset leading to innovation comes up within those who are like decision makers of companies because you have to throw yourself at an idea or some sort of concept oh, yeah. knowing that it could completely fail and often it will and oh, yeah. you still wake up the next day and go at it again you still have that resilience that persistence i don't know how other explorers do it but i just have the mentality uh, is of of uh, like not giving up I, I just don't give up um and um and i wasn't i i wasn't willing to just call it a day you know right. we had a second day um we had a, a awesome location um and so for me it was just like excitement what what's gonna happen next and 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, like uh, things got worse than the first day, but uh, <laughs> but but yeah, still, still um, amazing. Like ab- absolutely amazing time, and and we um, this place had so many different things. We had a hospital, we had a theater, it had a train, it had a, a movie set, it had like a bank vault, it had a, a time machine. Can you believe it? It had a time machine. It's almost like, like I'm you're an abandoned Disney World open just for yourself with the whole town there. It was just like insane. It was, hmm. it was absolutely, uh, I was, I just never expected to find all of those, all of those places. We had a bit of a close call with the security guard who, um, who caught us at the end. When I say I'm determined and I don't give up, it, this also comes with, I also mean that I, I am not going to get caught. So I take this determination with that situation as well. So I uh, would, I just, I'm just not going to get caught. That's <laughs> like I, would, <laughs> I will do, you know, especially because I, I live in China and, um, but it's not the fact that I live in China. It's just like <laughs> my school, like my school cannot just get me out of trouble again. I've been to, uh, bit of a shaky situation sometimes and you know they had to come and get me out of the police stations and stuff so i am um, i promise to them that i won't uh, get in trouble <laughs> uh, so you've, you've run out of your cat lives almost yeah you're still heading at these concepts of entering places that are unknown you know often overcome with nature persisting to kind of tell that story of what you share and it's very similar to david attenborough who's an explorer himself and are you familiar with him and his oh, documentaries yeah. in his witness statement um on netflix he he talks about this concept of needing us to innovate in a way to reach our critical mass of a population he's referencing that the places he's explored over the years are being that are alive, organic, you know, not populated by humans, are being taken away because of our increase in population, and likely as a result of things, you know, becoming abandoned as well. But his take is that as we've innovative, increased healthcare, increased opportunities, or quality of life. Um, through the innovation will likely hit critical mass. And I, I wanted to get a sense of, do you feel that even, uh, even as a math teacher that you're projecting this sense of an explorer's mindset and, you know, set your mind to something and, and keep at it is, is part of that solution. I wanted to get your reaction from that. Well, yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, like I, I, I am the example of a person who in terms of, you know, having the, 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 the current families and the birth rate and, and yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a person who is, is not uh, yet had a family and not planning uh, to have one. But you can see this a, a lot in, in the people that I, I meet. Um, there's a lot more people that just don't don't want to have children anymore and um and who are kind of more focused on on achieving something for themselves and kind of like the family takes the second um uh priority i don't know if this is a right or wrong choice um um i probably if uh, you know if if things haven't exploded in my personal life, I might have been one of the guys who already has a kid, you know, living in that we will never be talking right now. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and it may not always be necessary in, in a way the, and mm-hmm. because you're achieving that happiness uh, with that explorer's mindset. How do the, those that you teach math, how do they react to you kind of, you know, ha- passing on to them that like, no, keep at it, keep going, like don't give up or you know, think of it differently or do it this way or that way. Like it's that combination of everyone just becoming a better explorer for themselves. Yeah. But you see like in, in, in terms of like the, the school, um, building that resilience 
it's it's quite difficult, especially in the subject that I teach. What's the subject? Ha- it's math. So, so just math in general. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know, yeah. like, I had to take like pre-calc, I think twice. Math is just never fun it, for me until like later on in life when I realized it could be leveraged for things that you want to do. Um, so it took a while for me to kind of see that connection. But it is like the the thing is about it. It's you. Um, it's hard to accept that sometimes you are bound to fail, but you still need to carry on. And there is a correlation with like explore doing math. I can't believe I'm talking about math because uh, you know the moment I leave that classroom, it just stays behind me. But I. I, there is a correlation between between those two things because um, in kind of my exploring life, um, oh my God, there's the, 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 the moments where I fail, the moments where I travel for ages uh, and I get somewhere and there's absolutely no way in and or there is some security caught me and I have to run away and I've just kind of wasted all day. Um, but then you keep going there's another one there's another location and it's that mindset of kind of just not not giving up and being resilient and in the classroom it is difficult because if you don't feel successful at something it's it takes a a strength of character to keep keep going um and sometimes in life like you know it's there are circumstances that happened and sometimes you just need to be lucky, I guess. Uh, Because, you know, um, like I said before, like for me, it was a kind of combination of of, of things that happened. Um, People started liking my stuff and I just used it as like, oh, wow. Okay. So I'll I'll keep going. And I always had that sense of like, I can do it better than than others which is totally not true but uh, that self-belief as well uh kind of comes comes in in there i think that's the for me the heart of it is if more people had an explorer's mindset in their daily lives it can help us all in different ways whether you're a math teacher in china or you know, for me, someone who's, you know, in, uh, in another large city across the world. If I can add to it, because I think you just kind of tapped into something that um, uh, that kind of resonates with me. I would say it's the fear. It's the fear that drives people. Most of the people that I meet, uh, they're just afraid. They are, you know, the, um, they are afraid of the rules that we impose ourselves on us um and they don't look beyond those it's like okay well you know someone told me not to go there right. um, but but it is it is another person like me who had some sort of reason why um it doesn't mean it's gospel you know and and i i'm just i i decided that i need to change i decided at some stage in my life where i needed to the things that make me uncomfortable the things that that are out of my comfort zone those are the ones i want to do and 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 just because i don't want to do them in like inside i feel like uncomfortable that's where it makes me i i just want to i just want to i just want to try the best stories are inherently vulnerable and i think you like touched on it perfectly the funny thing about all of this is that with those risks that you take, like, you know, eight, nine times out of 10, uh, they, they pay off because not many people are taking risks. So wh- when you do it, it's like, it's unique. And so they, they do, you just need to, um, need to try. And I'm actually going to take a huge risk in my life. Uh, after this contract ends, in July 2022, I decided that I will travel your, around your the world. contract to teach uh, math. Yeah, I would just travel around the world for, for one year. And I will, 
Um, I mean, so many people are asking me to like, why, why are you not on YouTube? Why are you not sh sharing the videos on that? And I always say that, you know, you have, when you, when you decide to do something, you have to be consistent. Um, I don't do YouTube because I just don't have time for that. I don't want to go into doing something um, with, you know, 50% effort. If I, if I know that I'm not going to do it 100%, I won't do it. So maybe I will, um, I will create a channel and I will do kind of, and I want to go, I want to go to just like those places where no one goes. You know, I want to go to countries where no one, no one goes yeah, yeah. or the ones that are not popular. Um, and yeah, I just want to, I just want to go um, and, um, and do it for a year and see, see what happens. Wow. Well, I've definitely been following your journey, so I appreciate you sharing what you can and you've definitely inspired me. And I think this conversation really helped me tap into the different parts of what motivates you and just what excites you. And for me, like it's flipped the switch too. Like I, I really do believe that, that fear it resonates with everyone and often inhibits that innovation that is going to mm -hmm is something that we need in a post COVID world. Um, Cause things are just completely unknown. We're exploring it together. Um, so I'm really excited to see how your adventures are, will, will motivate everyone else. This has been a great conversation. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Of course, well, anytime, anytime. Yeah.